One Tuesday morning in autumn, at precisely half past eight, Sherlock Holmes received a mysterious message that two men of great public distinction would be visiting Baker Street in their private capacity and under circumstances of complete secrecy. Mr. Holmes. A document has been stolen from my private dispatch box. And when I discovered my loss, which was at 8 o'clock this morning, I at once informed the Prime Minister. It was at his suggestion that we both come to you. You have informed the police? No, sir, we have not done so. Nor is it possible that we should do so. To inform the police must, in the long run, mean to inform the public. And that is what we particularly desire to avoid. And why, sir? Because the document in question is of such immense importance that its publication might very easily, I might almost say probably, lead to European complications of the utmost moment. Unless its uh, recovery is attended by the utmost secrecy, then it may as well not be recovered at all. For all that is aimed at by those who have taken it is that its contents should be generally known. I understand. Watson, do sit down. Now, Mr. Trelawney Hope, I would be much obliged if you would tell me the exact circumstances under which this document disappeared. As Secretary of State for European Affairs, I received the letter six days ago. It was a letter from a foreign potentate, you understand. <clears throat> It was of such importance that I never left it in my safe, but I have taken it each evening from my office back to my house in Whitehall Terrace and kept it in my bedroom, locked in my dispatch box. And you are sure that it was there last night? Yes, I'm quite certain of that fact. I actually opened the dispatch box whilst I was dressing for dinner, and I saw the letter inside. It then remained upon my bedside table. Both my wife and I are light sleepers and are prepared to swear that no one could have entered the room during the night, and yet this morning the paper is gone. What time did you die? 7.30. How long was it before you went to bed? My wife had gone to the theatre. I had waited up for her. It was 11.30 before we went to our room. So, for four hours, the dispatch box had lain unguarded. Mr. Holmes, no one is ever permitted to enter that room, save the housemaid in the morning and my valet during the rest of the day. They are both trusty servants who have been with us for many years. Besides, Neither of them could have possibly known that there was anything more valuable than the ordinary departmental papers in my box. Surely your wife knew? Mr. Holmes, I've long known how high is Mr. Hope's sense of public duty. I'm convinced that in a case of this importance, it would rise superior to the most intimate domestic ties. You do me no more than justice, Prime Minister. Until this morning, I have never breathed one word to my wife upon this matter. Well, who is that in England who did know of the existence of this letter? Each member of the cabinet was informed of it yesterday, but the pledge of secrecy which attends every cabinet meeting was increased by the solemn warning given by the Prime Minister. God! To think that within a few hours I myself should have lost it. Besides the members of the cabinet, there are two, possibly three, departmental officials who know of the letter. No one else in England, I assure you. But abroad? 
I believe that no one abroad has seen the letter except the man who wrote it. I am well convinced that his ministers, that the usual official channels have not been employed in this case. Now, sir, I must ask you more particularly what this document is and why its disappearance should have such momentous consequences. Well, hey, Mr. Holmes, the envelope is a long, thin one of pale blue colour. There is a seal of red wax stamped with a crouching lion. It is addressed in large, bold handwriting. Interesting and indeed essential as these details are, my inquiries must go more to the root of things. What was the letter? It is a state secret of the utmost importance, which we cannot tell you, nor do I see that it is necessary. If by the powers which you are said to possess, you can find such an envelope as I've described with its enclosure, then you will have deserved well of your country and earned any reward which it is within our power to bestow. Gentlemen, you are two of the most busy men in the country. And in my own small way, I have a good many calls upon me. I regret exceedingly that I am unable to help you in this matter. And any continuation of this interview would be a waste of time. I am not accustomed, sir, to such. Hey, Mr. Holmes. We must accept your terms. No doubt you are right, and it is unreasonable for us to expect you to act unless you have our full confidence. I agree with you, Prime Minister. Then I will tell you, relying entirely upon your honor and that of your colleague, Dr. Watson, I must appeal to your patriotism also, for I cannot imagine a greater misfortune for this country than that this affair should come out. You are safely trust us. The letter, then, is from a certain foreign potentate who has been ruffled by some uh, recent colonial developments of this country. It is written hurriedly and upon his own responsibility entirely. At the same time, it is couched in so unfortunate a manner that its publication would undoubtedly lead to the most dangerous feeling in this country. There would be such ferment, sir, that I do not hesitate to say that within a week of the publication of this letter, this country would be involved in a great war. And it is this letter which may well mean the expenditure of a thousand million pounds and the lives of a hundred thousand men. Have you informed the sender? A cipher telegraph has been dispatched. Um, perhaps he desires the publication of the letter. No, Doctor, we have strong reason to believe that he already understands that he has acted in an indiscreet and hot-headed manner. It would be a far greater blow to him and his country than to us if this letter were to come out. If this is so, in whose interest is it that the letter should come out? Why should anyone desire to steal it and to publish it? And there, Dr. Watson, you take me into the realms of uh, high international politics. But if you consider the European situation, you will have no difficulty in perceiving the motive. The whole of Europe is an armed camp. Great Britain holds the scales. If Britain were driven into war with one confederacy, it would assure the supremacy of the other, whether they were joined in the war or not. So it is the enemies of this potentate who want to secure and publish this letter so as to make a breach between his country and ours? Yes, sir. And to whom would the document be sent if it fell into the wrong hands? To any of the great chancelleries of Europe. It is probably speeding its way thither at this present instant as fast as steam can take it. <sighs> it is your misfortune, my dear fellow. No one can blame you. There's no precaution which you've neglected. But now, Mr. Holmes, you are in full possession of the facts. What course do you recommend? 
You think that if this document is not recovered, there will be war? I think it is very probable. Then, sir, prepare for war. That is a hard saying, Mr. Holmes. Consider the facts. There seems no doubt this document was taken between half past seven and half past eleven yesterday evening, so where can it be now? No one has any reason to retain it. It has been passed from hand to hand rapidly to those who need it and who will pay well for it. What chance do we have to overtake it or even trace it? It is beyond our reach. What you say is perfectly logical, Mr. Holmes. I feel that the matter is indeed out of our hands. Meanwhile, hope. We cannot ignore all our other duties on account of this one misfortune. Then, should there be any fresh developments during the day, we will communicate with you. And you, no doubt, will let us know the results of your own inquiries. situation is desperate, but not hopeless. There are only three men capable of playing so bold a game, Oberstein, La Raffier, and Eduardo Lucas. Even now, if we could be sure which one of them has taken it, it is just possible that it does not pass out of their hands. Mm. It's a question of money with these fellows, isn't it? And we have the British Treasury behind us. Oh, if it's on the market, I'll buy it if it means another penny on the income tax. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Holmes. Mrs. Hudson, what is it? Lady Hilda Trelawney Hope. 